All right, this is your lock again, New Testament is Fake series. It's Sunday, January 29th, 2017. This lesson is entitled, All Your Idols. And I'm showing with this lesson from a couple of verses in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, that the Jesus message presented in the New Testament means nothing to the salvation of the children of Israel. The Most High did not send this person called Jesus. He is not the Son of God. And the Most High plans on giving salvation to Israel without him. That just needs to be stated very clearly. All Your Idols talks about the removal of idols from Israel, scattered Israel, as something that is critical and very telling as far as the salvation of Israel is concerned. The same way we were taught to measure or value the truthfulness of the salvation, so-called truthfulness of the salvation of Jesus by his death on Calvary, is the same way we should now correctly understand that the real value of the salvation of the Most High is going to be found in scriptures like what I'm going to read today that tell that the telling moment or the telling point of salvation is when our idols are removed. And that's really only a part of the, 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 the salvation because the gathering is going to be a part of that salvation as well. But if we thought, as we were taught incorrectly, that the death on Calvary was what told us that Jesus now rescued us, then, yeah, I mean, one has to wonder why we are not rescued. But you can now more correctly think that as opposed to Calvary telling that we have been visited by the Most High and given salvation for the sins of Israel, we can more tell that when he gathers us and our idols are removed from us, that's when you're going to tell that salvation has come to Israel. Because we were kicked out of the land partly because of our idols. So our restoration is going to include the removal of those idols to show that we are changed people because we have been changed in our hearts now. We're no longer worshipping those idols anymore. Just like Elijah on Mount Carmel was saying basically, you know, Israel, your God is, the God of Israel is saying, your hearts are now turned back to him. How could, how could he say that? Because there he was active in the moment, showing them through his prophetic uh, uh, activity right there on Mount Carmel, and with the sacrifice and the story and so on, that the most I was actually turning back to them because there would have been no response to the sacrifice which showed that the Baal teachers were false, Baal prophets, there would have been no response from the Most High to consume and send down fire to Elijah's sacrifice if the Most High had really not turned back the people unto him. So the turning back unto him comes with a response from the Most High. There was no response from the Most High that did anything to Israelites in Jerusalem because you can't count speaking in tongues on the day of Pentecost as the Most High turning to us because right after that they were slaughtered. Not too long after that, I should say, right? So th th that's not good. But we look at scriptures like in Isaiah 11 that says, when the Most High gathers us and so on, right? That's going to be a response that shows that salvation has come. So now I want to read from Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 23. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. Now, think for a moment that Israelites, even after Jesus, continued to worship idols. Even in the times when it was called the Dark Ages, just to hide stuff from us, and now we know that 
so-called black people were ruling all over Europe and so on. I mean, we were running the show, right? Until we were taken down again because that's just a part of our curse. We're not going to really stay on top right now. But even in these eras, we were worshipping other gods. So we had idols. We had images set up and so on, right? For these different gods. I just watched a video last night. I don't remember what it's called, but it's this guy, an, an Israelite, who is into Buddhism and he's proud of it, right? And uh, he's telling some history of Buddhism that's not easy for a lot of us to find, I guess, without uh, tons of searching. And it was great to hear what he's saying. Now, he probably doesn't realize he's an Israelite, um, and he didn't mention anything about it, but he's proud of Buddhism, and he, and he said it, right? Because he's proud of the history that it was about black people, right? And what I've found um, in recent months studying is that the Israelites mingled with the Hamites, went to a lot of different places on the earth, and they started religions, and they made up gods and so on, and they were worshipping these things, even though they were Israelites. So it's like the scripture is saying here, neither will they defile themselves anymore with their idols and their with their detestable things. So if Calvary was the turning point, and if Jesus was the salvation, then Israelites should not have continued to defile themselves after Calvary, after Jerusalem, after Roman times with idols. But yet we continued even into the so-called Dark Ages and even in today, we're worshipping idols. Some are into worshipping Buddha, some are into Buddhism, Hinduism and all these different religions, right? Some are in Christianity, some are worshipping a rock in Islam and so on. We're still doing it. But the scriptures clearly teach that when Israel is restored and receives salvation, which is salvation from the nations, right? Who are oppressing us, like in the book of Judges. They will stop these things. So if Jesus came and gave us salvation, why did we not stop these things? And why did we continue to be, um, to, to live like we don't know our identity, as in Jeremiah 17.4, right? Which I call the Syndrome 174, because that's just some serious problem that we suffer from. But it goes on here in Ezekiel 37.23. They won't detest, um, be detestable anymore with these things, these idols and so on. Nor with any of their transgressions. And we continue to do these transgressions after Jesus' salvation. So if he was the son of God and he gave us the salvation of the Father, why did we continue in transgressions? Why we still continue eating pork and all these things, right? When, when the scriptures clearly tell us that the, the Most High told his prophets to prophesy that when Israel receives salvation, the next time Israel receives salvation from me, because he'd given them lots of salvation in the book of Judges, but the next time they receive salvation from me, they will not be living in transgression anymore. But Israelites are living in transgressions, even today, in different ways, not just with idols, right? A lot of Israelites don't even keep the Sabbath, don't care about it, right? And we stop them on the street trying to talk to them and so on. They don't even care. Some of them cuss us out. But we will not uh, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places. Right? All their dwelling places. Like I said, we were all over Europe, all over the Americas, everywhere we were, right? In all their dwelling places, I will save them out of those places where they have sinned. Because we traveled the world over and we were sinning, sinning, sinning and worshipping our idols and participating in different religions. And some of them we started, right? In all these different dwelling places that we lived. Dwelling places here means the places that you lived plus the places where you were worshipping your God, your, your temples, your houses of worship and so on, right? I will save them out of all of that. But after Calvary, Israelites still continued. So that was not the salvation the Most High spoke of. Someone gave us a trick with the New Testament Jesus and the New Testament Gospels and Epistles. Because it doesn't, the New Testament story with Jesus does not produce an Israelite that no longer lives in transgression. But the salvation from the Old Testament, when it does happen, will produce restored Israelites that will live without transgressing anymore our hearts will be changed so that we don't want to ignore the sabbath anymore we don't want these false idols because we've lived in, in punishment and seen that these idols we were worshiping from the nation's gods did not do us any good we we're worshiping buddha we we're worshiping jesus we we're worshiping a stone we we're worshiping everything else we we're worshiping snakes we we're worshiping all kinds of things but they did not give us any benefit we were we continued to be oppressed in spite 
of worshipping all these different gods and all these different religions and all these different dwelling places or lands. Which means that the gods that we were worshipping along with our oppressors did not do anything for us, but it did something for our oppressors, right? It unified them to oppressing us more and gave them more and more power over us and, and gave them more and more agreement to, like, to say like, well, as long as they remain dumb and ignorant of the whole thing and we unify ourselves with our religions and with our gods, we are one by us unifying ourselves on these terms with our gods and with our money and with our whatever, right? So as long as we remain unified based on these things, these gods work for us. But it just doesn't work for them, so we'll keep them in the dark continually and whatever. But now the Mosai is waking up his people by having us one by one starting to rise up and speak and teach these things so that we can consider um, this whole thing with some more clarity. So I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. So the cleansing does not come at Calvary. It doesn't come from the Holy Ghost outpouring. Um, it doesn't come at that point when 3,000 souls were added in the book of uh, Acts. It doesn't come from Jesus' death on Calvary. Cleansing does not come from what happened in the New Testament. Cleansing comes when the Most High says, I'm going to gather them out of these lands and they will put away all their stuff. I will change their hearts and so on. And I will cleanse them in all the dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. And so shall they be my people and I will be their power. All right? So that's how it happens. Now, look at some of the different places that we've gone to, um, you know, and some of the gods we've worshipped, right? When it says their detestable things that they did and the idols they worshipped and all their dwelling places when we rule different places and they never told us it was Israelites ruling these places, right? Mayan gods we had, Indian gods, Chinese dragons, Ethiopian gods, Egyptian gods, all these gods we, we, we've, we've worshipped in all these different places we've been and more and more places, right? Because every now and then you hear somebody doing some research and they realize, hey, these people, this group was Israelites, this group over there was Israelites, this, and uh, the trick has happened. Uh, that has happened is that conquerors came and conquered us and killed our people and set up their own people in those same dwelling places to take on those same names and call themselves the Mayans or call themselves the this and the that, right? Uh, and so and so they took on our names and now when you look, all these artifacts are uh, uh, and different things that they found just point only to those new people who conquered us but they're not telling you that there were israelites there before and of course sometimes we know they were mingled with hamites because we seem to travel around with them so much um but at least we were there in these spaces right so these are just telling you some of the places that we've been to where we were worshiping other gods but the most High saying when salvation comes you are not going to be doing this anymore ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25 Ezekiel 36 and 25. Actually, let me read 24. Um, no, I'll read 23 to 20, maybe 25 or 26. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen. So basically, if you read the... the first part of the chapter is telling you that basically when salvation comes some changes are going to happen which are listed in this chapter and these things are found in other chapters and other books as well like Isaiah and Jeremiah right? and these things did not happen when Jesus came and died in Calvary or after the day of Pentecost and so on so that can't be the salvation he's speaking of that was a gimmick it was a fake it was a trick of the Romans but he's telling you how you will know, how you'll be able to tell when salvation really has come, when I have done it. Basically, he's saying, this is how you're going to know, right? Because he's speaking through his prophets, because he reveals his secrets to the prophets, right? This is how you're going to know. He says, and I will sanctify my great name, verse 23, which was profaned among the heathen. Let me ask you, after Jesus died in Calvary and Holy Ghost upon the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls added in one day and so on. Was the Most High's great name sanctified? Come on. Was his great name sanctified? We still got people today. You see, when his great name is sanctified, everybody's going to know what his name is. Some of us are arguing over, is it Yah, is it Yahuwah, is it um, 
Ahaya, is it Haya, whatever. You know, I thought all those names myself when I just came into this, right? I bounced back and forth from all these names and wondering. One time it got so complicated, so difficult, I'm just like, I'm just going to take the nicer sounding one. Is Yahuwah sound better than Ahaya? <laughs> yeah, I know you might laugh, but that's what it came out to be at some point. But I want the nicer sounding one. Does Yah sound better than Yahuwah? What if I say Yahawa? Does that sound better? Which one is easier to pronounce, easier to say? Uh, stuff like that I went to because it just got so complicated. But when the Most High actually um, clears up the whole issue with his name as a part of the gathering and sanctifies his great name, he says, people aren't going to be wanting anymore. Certainly Israelites will not be wanting because it's going to become clear, right? It's going to become clear. Now, now the, the, the best I see is, is higher, right? But I'm still not sure. I used to think that, but I'm still not sure. So I still, because, I, you know, I started to have some questions even about that, right? But if it is, I'll find out later. If not, I don't know. I keep searching still. But for the moment, I go with Haya, but, you know, I don't make a big deal of it like I thought I should because I got some questions, some real questions about it, right? I found this guy. I just cannot find him again. He said lots of stones were found and kept secret, I guess, in places in Africa with the name Haya on it. But I never saved the video at the time, and now it's like it's been like over two years, and I cannot find the guy this video anymore. It was on YouTube. I just can't, and I just like man, I was just tired at the time. I didn't save it. I figured it would be such an easy thing to find because not many people um, would have made a video like that. I figured, you know, but it's, I just can't seem to find it. So I wish I could find it and see. You know, he didn't tell where the stones were found. I wish he would have given the locations and who is holding them information about it you know so that I, but at least if i find his video again then i could contact him and say do you have any more information about this where can i find something you know but whatever but at least he's saying i will sanctify my great name now after jesus death on calvary his great name was not sanctified the most High's great name was not sanctified and i've told you before in another video if the most high kicked out the church of israel out of the land for different transgressions including profaning his name then they left the land with a broken name, might I say, a profaned name. They never fixed the name issue. So how is it now that we're going to accept from our captors that his name is Yahweh or Yah or, or so on, right? How are we going to accept that? I, I just don't know. I, and I'm, I just don't know. I just have questions, right? So if the Israelites knew the name but messed it up intentionally and they were kicked out and they never fixed it in the scrolls, um before they left then since we have not returned who fixed the name you mean the heathen fixed the name the power name that's going to redeem us that if we call in that name things happen and they're just going to fix the name and give us knowing that the name takes us closer to being delivered no that's why i have a problem with the names right that are bouncing around but anyway he says when he fixes his name that's when our salvation comes right that's a part of the whole package of salvation. And so if people are still fighting over the name, that means the name issue has not been fixed yet. It has not been solved. I just found someone with a book um, with the names of God and they got a ton load of new names and new ways to, to say the name and, and all the variants of the name and whatever, how it should be pronounced and so on. This Jehovah name and Jehovah Yahweh and whatever, right? Names that I never saw before. So obviously, people are still still writing books about it, right? Because everybody's trying to figure it out. So it's not been fixed. So that means we have not received salvation yet. So Calvary salvation is fake. Because when he gathers us and, and gives us salvation, the name issue will be fixed. You're telling me after 2,000 years that Christ has died, the name can't be fixed? Come on. Profane among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the Most High. Do the heathen know that he is the Most High? Do the heathen know that he is our God? No, they don't. Yeah, the world elite leaders who are running the world and keeping us oppressed and so on, they know it and they're hiding it from us. But the heathen in general, their peoples don't know it. They don't know his great name. And they don't know that he is the Lord, it says here, but they don't know that he is the most high. They don't. 
Because the scriptures let us know that when the world knows that he is the one, he is the power, he is the creator, the world will change. They will have no choice. Some are going to love him and choose and come to, to Zion to learn from us, like in Micah chapter 4 verse 2 and so on. Um, and others are going to be forced, they're going to be coerced into it. They'll have no choice. That has not come yet in 2,000 years since Calvary. So Calvary was not the salvation, right? Um, the heathen shall know that I am the Most High when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. He was not sanctified in us before their eyes after Calvary, right? For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries that did not happen after Calvary and will bring you into your own land that did not happen after Calvary. They actually ran from their land in AD 70. After Calvary, right? Verse 25, Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. Basically, that's just starting about sanctification, right? Um, you'll be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you from all your idols? Yeah, why? Because we, after Calvary, still continue to worship idols. I worship uh, an idol from I was a child, right? Some people say Jesus is not an idol. As far as I'm concerned, he looks very well to be an idol, right? And there are many idols of him and pictures of him were in my house growing up. In the um, small statues, although we weren't big on statues, maybe there might have been one or two over the years. So I was a child, I... I it was in the house, but mainly on the pictures, the graven image, right? Because a printer, we didn't ch chip that out of stone or wood, but a printer carved the image of Jesus on the calendar every January 1st we got it. That was an idol in our house growing up. So we were in these uh, w religions, worshipping these different idols all along right but the most High says when he does cleanse us we won't be doing this now we'll be cleansed from all our idols so after calvary yeah um there was none of that we continue none of that cleansing we continue to worship idols right so yeah i mean israel ran to africa and elsewhere in these other nations and uh, countries i mentioned earlier um, and made idols and religions with Hamites and with other people that they found as well. They got into Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, and so many other thousands and thousands of religions that are out there, right? And uh, they had idols and pictures and images in all these religions of their saviors for these religions, right? That they trusted in and they promoted these saviors. They promoted these saviors, right? But the Most High is saying he is the savior. And when he does give us salvation, all these idols will be gone. No one will be printing a picture of Jesus anymore. No one of us as an Israelite will be doing that anymore. It will all be in the past. It will all be in the past.